with the caboodle of disciplines in humanities, unquote, that is oftentimes locally contextualized. Quote, traversing all walks of life towards the understanding of humanity in its persistence to live life in the most meaningful sense, unquote. The first fundamental reference to Ornedo's philosophical insight is the master's thesis he wrote and almost circulated in 1972, almost. The work in which he said was pretentiously entitled by its editor as The Philosophy of Freedom, which was withdrawn from circulation as it has disturbed people seriously enough. So if you remember, 1972, if you connect the year with the title, The Philosophy of Freedom, then we'd realize that it would be dangerous to release a material like that during those times. In the year 2000, though, the USD Press picked up and republished the book with the title, The Power to Be, A Phenomenology of Freedom. In this work, he claimed to have entertained the basic human questions that he discovered after years of teaching many subjects in the humanities. More particularly, he invited his readers to reflect on the main stuff of freedom given its local and metaphysical premises. After going through numerous classical and contemporary literary and philosophical theories on being and be be human becoming, Hornedo argued that freedom is a power strength or a kind of autonomous energy which makes action possible and thereby fostering development and justice. So here he developed the notion of freedom which is connected to power and oftentimes he would give the example of one's freedom to sing which is only possible if one is capable of singing. So that will have to be supported uh, in his essay, Pagpapakatao, or he would also give, I remember him giving the example of um, being capable of cooking, and for that you'll be free to cook, because if you're not capable to cook and you're given the freedom, makalason na ang magawa mo. So, he would have that unique rendition of freedom. But as Hornedo also claimed to have done a sort of phenomenology, the method of the book baffled some readers because he is not necessarily a focused writer. So he would mention different theories coming from different fields that would um, justify um, his brand of phenomenology. So with the demand for a more intense demonstration of Hernando's familiarity with phenomenology as a theoretical framework, his forceful concentration in keeping phenomenology as a method and his novel take on human nature as free and powerful remained at the helm. So, some bits of pieces of his philosophy on freedom, and later on we'd find him elaborating this through a corporeal phenomenology, uh, which is localized as proven by the Tagalog essay entitled Pagpapakatao. And that is an effective essay if you mean to make an anthropological base in teaching of ethics. So he moved on to weave a sort of corporeal and localized philosophical anthropology. So what followed after the power to be are publications that are more straightforward in doing phenomenology still as a method and in speaking about human nature. Noticeable are his more straightforward expositions of phenomenological theories. As a matter of fact, in 2004, um, through USD Publishing House, he published an anthology of essays, Filipino essays on phenomenology that are grounded on theory. And this is different from um, Dr. D's anthology that would use phenomenology as method by clinging on or citing experiences. This essays, collection of essays by Dr. Hernedo and his friends also working on phenomenology are theory bound. So I think this is his way of articulating that he's also grounded on theory, only that he is coming from different disciplines and perspectives. So noticeable are his more straightforward expositions of phenomenological theories while not losing his habit of citing examples 
coming from his different fields of studies. Most notable of which is his essay, Pagpapakatao, where he used the concepts of Edmund Husserl in demonstrating how modernist dualisms are connected in the field of human corporeal experience. In this essay, he echoed in the vernacular about how Husserl thinks of consciousness, or what he'd call there as kamalayan, okay? As consciousness of. Kamalayan there will have to be depicted as such because of its, of its aim, knowledge, which he would translate as kaalaman. At sa kaalaman, makikita natin ang galaw ng isip, yung noesis, yun na yung alam, pag-alam, and the content, which is the noema, at yun ang laman, kaya kaalaman. Basahin niya yung pagpapakatao. Makakatulong yan sa inyong mga thought pieces, okay? So, he would think of consciousness or kamalayan bilang kaalaman o isang paglalaman, thus being consistent with the Husserlian as consciousness as consciousness of, and have shown how a local articulation of such noetic act can best depict the relation between noesis, which he described as malay tao, and its content, which he translated into ang laman ng malay tao. With the use of Filipino, he regarded consciousness as malay tao to be able to link the mind to the world through experience with the agency of the body or of katawan. And so, this renders an immediate connection to the self-exclamation, Ako ang aking katawan. And he kind of developed this by saying that at first the body is a possession, that we kind of say, Ako ay may katawan, kaya pwedeng sabihin na, so, wag mo akong tapakan, teka lang, pao mo lang ang tinatapakan ko. But further phenomenological experience, or yeah, in phenomenology, when we further intensify experience, then we lead on to realize that we don't just possess a body, but rather we own, or rather we are the body. So, mula sa ako ay may katawan, nasasabi natin na ako ang aking katawan. I am my body. Ako ang aking katawan, I am my body. So, in this na, hindi pa ang, ah, hindi ikaw ang tinatapakan ko, kundi yung pa ang malang, eh talagang ako nga ang tinatapakan mo. Okay? Try nyo yun sa mukha, di ba? So, minsan sa level din lang ng katawan yan. Kapag daliri lang, eh di, daliri ko lang yan. Pero pag ang mukha ang tinapakan, ay wang usapan yan. Ako ang tinapakan mo. Di ba? So, mas intense pag dinis-discuss kasi ito ni Dr. Hernet sa classroom. Lumalabas yung mga ganyang examples. So, yung mga examples ko ngayon, siguro mga 70% kalin din sa kanya. Mula MA hanggang dulo, kada SEM, prof ko si sir, kaya, hi sir. Okay. So, the phenomenological claim above most likely is not just derived from Husserl. It is something that he has been declaring in some of his earlier works, specifically in Catholic education, growing to become men or women for others. And in this work, he writes, I quote, as embodied being, he is as well and has a body. He identifies with his body, but at the same time regards his identity as not coterminous with his body. He is at once a body and more than a body. He is able to transcend being merely body or merely being product of physical forces. He is temporal and therefore subject to time. He is born and grows old and wears away. But in the time of his passage, he creates manifestation of his passage through time. He builds ideas and institutions. He embodies his ideas. That is, he gives them concrete reality. And in doing so, or in so doing, he creates history. From this point, Pernedo departs from Husserl and shifts to a more embodied elaboration of how it is to be human. With a consciousness that is corporeally connected to the world, he proceeds to explain how man weaves his own story in time through creative acts, work, freedom, love, justice. These are the ways by which we thrive in time, leave our historical imprints, Creativity testifies how a self is decisive, or how a self is a decisive and meaningful product, 
a beautiful work of existence. In work, we proclaim our value, or in pagpapakatao, he'd call this, pagpapahayag ng sariling pakinabang. Through what we do and what we can offer. Through creativity and work, one's interiority or subjectivity is revealed, which Ornedo would call as kalooban. He elaborated on this notion of kalooban by using Kovar's anthropological metaphor of the palayo, the klipa. For Ornedo, such self-making is an expression of strength that is freedom. And further strength does not only yield change within the self, but also the capacity to pass on to others such power. So he'd say, ang pagpapalaya ay pagbibigay lakas, pagbibigay kakayahan. So in translation, to set free is to empower, to grant strengths. Kaya kung ikaw ay nagpapalaya, magbibigay ka ng lakas. O diba? Man spreads his freedom, his humanness, by being a man for others. The inquiry into the wholeness of himself changes the meaning of the world around him by relating them to him not as things or objects, but as meaning. He discovers that meaning is not objectivity, but relatedness. And that relatedness does not happen simply as a given, but that it is a project of his freedom. Inasmuch as one is born, or better yet, thrown into a society, Bernardo upholds that human freedom poses the challenge to respond and participate with the projects of others. And such ethical or social demand is only granted in the presence of others who would fully recognize or who would also dutifully recognize our value as persons and address what we deserve. That's why in Pagpapakatao we'll find him saying, Higit sa regalo, karapatan ay kaloob ng lipunan. Malayang binibigay ng ayon sa halaga ng tao para sa kanyang pagtubo. Samantala, tao rin tumatagap ang siyang nagbibigay ng kairlan ng pag-undan. Translation, more than a gift, rights are offered by the society as freely bestowed in accordance to human work and progress. Meanwhile, it is also humane to grant opportunities for and participate in projects of becoming. The above quotation highlights the anthropological basis of society and progress. For Ornedo, society and even the force of freedom demands each self to be responsible, to participate, and to share. Yan ay yung managot, makisangkot, at gamitin ang lakas ng pandama para tumugon sa masidhing pangangailangan ng iba. To respond, be involved, and use one's sensibilities to address difficult needs. For Ernedo, the pinnacle of sociality is love. It is an act that advances in the field of human values. He regarded this utmost expression of the utmost human value as pagmamahal, coming from the root mahal, which means either valuable or expensive, and which one pays for the highest price. So the economic mode um, should be emphasized and um, that is distinct from regarding love as pag-ibig which points out choice. Okay? Uh, for Hernedo, love is about paying the price for it. Uh, it is about paying for the price of something and that is to render value to something or to somebody. Okay? So, the opposite of which then is pagmumara, which is the Filipino term for defamation. Now, this love is offered in the midst of justice through the arbitration of laws and institutions. But despite the seeming stifles in conflicts for justice, Ornedo quips that the highest of laws is granted by God's commandment to love. Kaya kung sakaling may pagbabanta ang katarungan, laging tatandaan na ang unang batas ay ang magmahal. At sinong, sino pinanggalingan ng batas na yun? Ayon kay Dr. Hornedo, ang Diyos, ang, sa Diyos nang galing ang batas ng pagmamahal. Now, what seals the phenomenological deal is with Ornedo's echoing of the existential but particularly Heideggerian claim that man is being towards death. This speaks not just of man's final stamp of meaning, 
but also how the body concedes to the passing of time, which gears one to find the infinite, and that is God. And so he says, this accents, or death accents the experience of man, of the seeking after that which cannot be dissolved, either by the passage of time or of death, the concern for the absolute. For Ornedo, death is a corporeal closure that conditions man to anxiously value his freedom. But more importantly, it orients man towards a necessary dimension he has to look forward to, and that is the dwelling in the absolute. So by way of conclusion, phenomenology is freedom from intellectual necrophilia. In his preface, The Power to Be, or in his preface to The Power to Be, Ornetto mentions that man is bound to engage with two conflicting schools of thought, fundamentalism and postmodernism. For him, both positions evade personal decision and commitment to a rational and critical engagement with the search for a ground for being and action. Fundament fundamentalism and postmodernism deprive man of his self-governance and the power to be for others as fundamentalism would cling on to authority and postmodernism would cling on to the fact that there are many narratives. So, for Hernando, there is a need to redirect the inquiry of freedom from the dialectics of theories towards the most authentic and self-scrutinizing ways. Hernando's turn to phenomenology could be described as a shift to organic thought articulating the relationship between thought and the act of living. He can be remembered in many lectures complaining about philosophy's obsession with death. This is a true story, I could attest to this. I am a living witness. He would always say that philosophy has been a training in necrophilia that leads to mummification and parroting of concepts that will only be repeated by the next batch of scholars talking about this and that over and over with the same topics. And all of this we celebrate, while in truth we have not truly escaped from that same old shell. Consistent with his inquiry on human freedom, Ornedo's intellectual excursus, regardless of what his critics say, have clearly liberated the local philosophical inquiry from just flipping through the pages. His courageous employment of phenomenology as a method have prompted his students and followers to put philosophies in dialogue with other human sciences, both in writing and in deeds. Doing so will always be a difficult task because venturing in other fields would mean a demand to refocus and to courageously leap out, out of our theoretical and textual comfort zones. It's, it would require an exit from engaging with our favorite philosophers and just by their works. For all that it is worth though, we all believe that nothing shall be wasted because as we were taught how to have thoughts that reflect our ways, our lives, we experience freedom and we empower previously cloistered thoughts. So the challenge of Dr. Hernedo is to immerse oneself, to put philosophy in dialogue with other fields, especially with those that are connected to our lives. Okay, so allow me to share the little that I have, the little that I have discovered about, uh, about Dr. Hernedo in our visit to his place last 2016, and that was on his first year uh, death anniversary. Um, we, we organized the first Florentino Hornedo Memorial Lecture uh, and it was spearheaded by Dr. Job Shim Aguas and we discovered a lot and a lot to be done about Dr. Hornedo and his legacy. So here is his house, okay, by the beach, Nax, in Sabtang, Batanes, and you know in Sabtang, um, it is another island and from Basco where the plane lands, you still have to move to another island and um, encounter big waves, okay, so, but it was already night time and his death anniversary that we got to this place because we had to visit him in the grave, in his grave, so, that's the one facing the beach, so. 
that made me quite realize that he must have thought a lot because of inspiration. A lot to think about when you are in that place. So that could be that could be the perfect place for an artist, a writer, a philosopher. And so, medyo na intindihan ko kung bakit ganun siya. Okay, and um, yeah. So, a history major in the Bruno Mars of Philosophy Department in Adamson. <laughs> so, holding the tarp of Dr. Hornedo. So, we had to bring materials for the conference and there, that's his grave in a very, very simple cemetery in Sabtang. And that one is located by the mountains, Sababa. And so, indeed, the place is very peaceful there. Yan. So, the gravestone is kind of a tribute. And it came not just from his family, but also from his students. They helped together to put up that, that text, that precise text. And then we realized that um, since in Batanas it's a very small community, a lot has been in, uh, a lot have been influenced by the great man, and they would really talk about what to put there. So they said that it took a year for them to put up those words. So there, so kasimpleng yan, de ba? Pinag-usapan talaga. So his works are housed in the Batanas Heritage Center, which is in Vasco. But to tell you frankly, the condition of his works and collections there um, needs further action. Because they're just stacked in the second level of the building and um, in two, two to three big rooms. And they appear like this. I hope you get what I mean, guys. If you are a student, then you'd realize that a lot should be done. There's, there's a lot of work to do, okay? So I know that my audience are Philo majors, but I think this should also catch the attention of the history majors because um, they're into archiving and all that. But um, this is a collection of his works, books, manuscripts, drafts, artifacts, photos, maps, and paintings, and religious images. So imagine this Balikwayan boxes. Hindi siya ganyan kalaik, malaki talaga siya. So I actually placed the GM there as your reference, okay? <laughs> and seniors will know that this, that one is a big guy, right? Yeah? So for you to visualize, uh, all of this are just being taken care of by a former student of Dr. Hernando also. It's Kuya Angel, but all that he could do is to dust off. And um, what could dusting off do, right? So, a lot should be done. So, that's another perspective. Okay. Tapos yung iba na sa Balenciaga bag pa, di ba? So, <laughs> so there, then you'd re and yeah, plastic stacks. Marami, as in super. Okay. And um, the Ivatans would say that uh, it was actually Saint Vincent de Ferrer who's watching over the works. Yes, yeah, somehow it's safe. Okay, so that's their. Um, that's their joke, Pambayan. <laughs> it's a local joke. And then, um, here you see, uh, it's a, to your left, is a compilation of his articles in the CCP Encyclopedia of Philippine Art, Bookbound. He was the one who processed that, compiled. And then, on the other side are combinations of books and his very own books and his collection, um, some of which were taken from Manila, galing sa bahay nila na sunog, kaya yung iba doon nabasa kasi hindi natupok yung bahay kundi nabasa yung mga libro. Yung panik yung mga bombero, mas nabasa yung libro. Pero nawala yung sunog. Yun yung kwento niya dyan. 
and then there. The, the manuscript of the philosophy of freedom in 1972 is that um, that in green and um, the power to be, which is uh, the 2000 version, is to your right. But that's just one in the same work. And hindi ko alam ko nag iisa lang to din sa collection niya. Imagine na, nag iisa. So there, 1993 publication, some of which he has spoke about. But um, if you could see the condition of the works, kailangan talaga ng action. It has been two years already, or maybe one year and a half. We do not know what happened, but um, there. And then these are volumes of Unitas where he first published the uh, In Bits Lahi, an Ivatan folk lyric tradition, uh, <coughs> poetry ballad. Then there. Artifacts, because he's into collecting artifacts from places. The left and maps to your right, just rolled and on the floor. Yeah. And then religious images, quite people lang yan. But what struck me more and uh, what I found to be most endangered, what should be saved, are the paintings, just like that one. Shagumawanya. That one. It's a big painting of Basco. I think. There you have our project head, Dr. Aguas, and Mr. Mon Imperial, who works for the provincial government of Batanes. Uh, most of the government officials there have been students of Dr. Hornedo. All the teachers there were students of Dr. Hornedo in St. Dominic's College. Oh, Dominican. How often ba natin yun? No? Uh, but are there Dominicans in Batanes? None? Sister Siata eh, ano po? Sister, so maybe uh, the works were... Hanggang ngayon, napapanigaynipan ko pa nga yung mga works pa minsan. <laughs> so, malaking painting yan. Aerial shot ng Batanes. And that painting was done by Dr. Hernedo. Lahat ng paintings na pinakita ko sa inyo, class. Siya may gawa nun. Lahat nakatambak lang dun. Anong gagawin natin? So, uh, these are shots. The last two pictures are shots from the first Florentina H. Ornedo Memorial Conference where we delivered papers and his students um, delivered testimonials and shared their experience of Dr. Ornedo. Um, the details were recorded and transcribed by Dr. Hernet, uh, by, by Dr. Aguas and um, the representative of the history department, si Gian. Okay, so that um, for the proper documentation, suppose it's about time to prepare a volume of tribute for him. So, yun. Um, as I have mentioned a while ago, kahit ako napapanaginipan ko yung works, uh, because of the urgency to act upon, to act upon it, okay, so if you'd like to work on the philosophy of Dr. Hernedo, maybe for your thesis, then, um, right, it is good to check the published works, but I think we, we should keep in mind at all times that his phenomenology is really um, an articulation of localized thoughts, okay, uh, uh, that's the Hernedo spirit. He could talk about philosophy, but he could not talk about philosophy without putting it down to the level of experience. Okay, so I hope that I have pleased Dr. Hermeta in this lecture. Thank you very much. about kay Dr. Hernedo and yung topic ko po is pag-unawa ng secularismo sa Pilipinas gamit ang konsepto niya ng mitolohiya at ng mga banal. 
So, yung concept ko po dito ng secularism is, unlike po sa separation of church and state na Western, yung sa akin po is yung unti-unting pagkalimot ng mga kultura, katutubong kultura at tradisyon ng Pilipino. Um, so, yung question ko po is, sa tingin niyo po, ang magiging dating po ba kay Dr. Herneda ng secularismo ay something positive or negative um, as the world progresses, yung development po. Sundali. Pagbagay ko, ang talagang makakasagot ng tanong mo ay yung nag-aaral, nakapag-aaral kay Dr. Ornello, hindi sa pedoskopiya kundi sa kasaysayan. Dahil ang mga halimbawa niya dito ay ayon sa kasaysayan. Um, so, all that I could do is to estimate his score on secularism on the basis of phenomenology in philosophy. Siguro ganon. Um... So, it would require a little hermeneutic, no? Um, it would be best, I think, to, philo uh, to philosophically ground that theme. Bibigyan na lang kita ng hints. Kasi, mahirap sagutin ng tanong hanggat hindi kompleto yung datas mo. It's hard to answer the question if you do not have all the sources. But I think you'd be able to find a good interpretation. Um, if you will check the power to be, Okay, where freedom will have to come from man and not from any institution, be it religion or the state. Okay, um, and Catholic education, where he talk about human formation. Okay, but this time, um, on the merits of education and institution. So, phenomenologically, maganda na i-ground yung merits ng secularism din sa tao na nanggaling sa isang lipunan. At sa lipunan may mga institusyon. Pero yung lipunan na yun, sa ginagalawa natin, um, dito natin ginagamit yung kalayaan natin. At sa kalayaan na yun, nagkakaroon tayo ng pananagutan. Pwede doon. Pwede ka maglaro doon sa area na yun. So, sinabi ka yun, hindi para sagutin ka ng tuwid, kundi para ilagay sa tabang philosophical na direksyon yung tanong mo dahil philo major ka. Okay? Kasi ang tendency ng pagsagot sa tanong na yan ay hindi necessarily philosophical. Pero sana kung sasagutin mo yan, dun sa philosophical ka pupunta. So magsisimula marahil sa idea ng kalayaan at pananagutan sabay punta doon sa lipunan. Okay. At doon magkakaroon ng linaw yung kahalagahan ng sekularismo sa philosophical na tema. Okay? Kasi may possibility na mula sa kasaysayan, tumalun sa politika, kapag kung sa kung ano lang ang sinabi ni Dr. Hernedo patungkol doon. So, bunutin natin yung filosofiya. Yung humanism, wag mo kakalimutan yung humanism na sinusulong ni Dr. Hernedo. Okay, thank you, Pop. From the Barsi family. As a student of Dr. Hernando, what do you think is the most important characteristic of him that aspiring philosophers and writers should emulate? Okay. Kala ko may pagtuloy. As a student, Siguro I just share what I've learned from the great man, no, and um, that is the need to ground what you have learned from how your life is or what your life is all about. Um, philosophy is very hard to articulate if you will just depend on theories. You could be the best thinker, researcher. Um, intellectual that you could be if you read but you know that will just pass if what you're doing the scholarly endeavor that you're you're in would uh, be connected with your being and your becoming I hope you get the time you know then sa organic thought okay if you kind of generate organic thought out of the things that you do then it is the time that you are truly philosophizing. Um, based on experience, uh, I think uh, 
It is Dr. Hernando. He influenced me to apply, to strive, to use phenomenology both as a framework and a method. It would not be difficult when I am teaching philo majors. You're required to study it as a framework. But with the non philo majors, that becomes a big problem. So, it to make sense, you know, um, para para pumitik ng kamalayan, okay? Then you have to go back to organic thought. You have to connect theory to how you live or how you think your students live. Okay, Dr. Hernando is known um, to teach um, while referring to many things. And he talks a lot. Even up to the point of closing the university. Okay, with his lectures. Even up to the point when guards have to tell him that it's 10 p.m. and we should all go home. And you know what time? Classes in the grad school end, 9 p.m. So he's still talking at 10 and we couldn't stop him because he lectures a lot. And um, there was never a wasted time. So it's just okay. Wala na kami makainan after that. But you know, that's an excuse to go a little farther, maybe to Rojas Bolivar's so. He said it was an official excuse to stay late out. Stay out late. Okay, so, but really, um, I think that's where, uh, it is in that area where I learned from the Florentino Ornedo. No? Um, yeah. If there is somebody who has urged me to stick to phenomenology, I think he's one of them, Dr. Ornedo. Okay, because as a, it's, it's a framework, it's hard to read Husserl, it's hard to read Diaspores, it's hard to read Marcel, but um, paano mo mapapanindigan ng phenomenologia? Pag ma-appreciate ma mo na yung method, yun, yun yung ginamit niya. Yun. Parang, to, to an austere philosophy student, parang strange sa mga unang wala. Ay, puro lang kwento yung prof. Pero you'd realize in the long run, dun sa point na memorize mo na yung mga jokes. Kasi from MBA to PhD ba naman naging prof mo. Na through that, theories will just sink. And then you'd get into the core of the philosophies because of that method. And then um, eventually, you'd get to, you'd get to do that in your own practice as well. Um, lately, because I'm also handling existentialism and phenomenology, um, last year was my first time to handle the course and I tried to do it purely theoretical, so the red, the red, the red show. I am the type of teacher who does not tell stories in class. Rare, it's very rare. But I think um, there are some instances when it is necessary. It is necessary to refer to other aspects that are otherwise than philosophy so that you know you could articulate um, the meaning of things, okay? You could get into the consciousness of um, those who are listening to you, okay? And um, you could get to reflect, okay, if theory still makes sense, so, yun. Follow-up question. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, Dr. Hernando is not a focused writer. He wrote from different uh, fields or different uh, disciplines. Uh, of all the uh, works that he wrote po and you discussed earlier, what is the most important work of uh, Which of those is the most important? Depends on you, I must say. Um, it's a philosophy that has to be pagpapakatao. You know that book is a compilation of essays in literature and philosophy and um, theory, political theory. But um, pagpapakatao is at the forefront, so that essay. Okay, um, that is also an effective essay, an introductory essay to ethics, because ethics should begin with man. Remember that. Um, secondly, in philosophy, ba? Um, his book on Catholic education. Okay, because there you'd see um, his traditional roots, which is an Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. Yon. In <laughs> pagmamahal at pagmamara. Parang cultural studies na rin. Um, pagmamahal and pagmamara is quite... Yes, it's still philosophical, pero it's still pegot pagpapakatao. In other fields, I am no longer sure. Maybe in history, in ideas, in ideals, yun. That would click. In literature, uh, yung his works and folk, folk lit, etc. But I'm choosing to focus on philosophy. 
電球が。だいぶさ、ほらのオーラス、あ、みんなもあてん、かっぱだけん、たのみなもさる。Katibayan ng pagkilala ay ginagawal kay Ma'am Flor de Liz R. Altes Albella, Ph.D. bilang pagkilala sa kanyang mahalagang naibahagi para sa seminar na pinamagatang Pagbabalik Tanaw sa mga Pilipinong Pilosopo, Florentino Hornedo. Ipinagkaloob ngayong ikadalawampun dalawa ng Pebrero taong 2018 sa The Central Laboratory Auditorium, Universidad ng Santo Tomas. Nilagdaan ni na Maria Teresa I. Madrigal, Pangulo ng 4 Filo 1, Roman Patrick Q. De Villa, Pangulo ng 4 Filo 2, Jovito V. Carino, Ph.D. Seminar Coordinator, and Emmanuel C. De Leon, Ph.D. Seminar Coordinator. isa sa una sa serye ng mga seminar bilang pagbabalik-tanaw sa buhay at mga gawa ng mga pilosopong Pilipino. Ibuos po kami ang nagagalak na naging madagumpay ito dahil sa, sa ating mag mga magkakapangkat, ang Team Ornedo, at sa ating butihing seminar coordinator na si Dr. Emmanuel De Leon at Dr. Jovito Carino. Naway ang mga aral at pilosopikal na mga pagbab pagbabagit at ay may isa buhay at magamit natin sa ating pamumuhay at lalong higit sa ating mga pagsasas pagsusumikap sa filosofiya. Sana po ay samahan nyo kami muli sa mga susunod pang dalawang mga natitilang seminar ugol naman kina Dr. Emerita Quito at Dr. Tomas Rosario. Muli, maraming salamat. Ngayon niyo po sana na tayo magsitayo para sa pangwas na panalangin na pangunahan ni Pilipini Pilisky Ibrel Kadiwa ng 4.2 at susunda ng pangamit ng USD. Pangalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo, Amin. Ama namin mo pagmahal, pinupuri at pinapasalamatan ka namin sa lahat ng mga biyayang itinagalaw mo sa amin, lalo't higit sa araw na ito. Pinasasalamatan ka namin sa pagbibigay mo sa amin ng pagkakataon upang maging bahagi ng makabunuhang patitipon na ito. Salamat din ko, Panginoon, sa mga taong naging daan upang maisakatuparan ang magandang layunin ng pagtuturo. Naway may isaisip at may isa puso namin ang aming mga natutunan sa araw na ito. Ang lahat ng ito ay itinataas namin sa iyo sa pamamagitan ng mahal na Birheng Maria na aming ina at ni Heso Kristo na aming Panginoon. Amen. Sa ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo.